So, my university is known under the abbreviation of CAI, meaning Kharkiv Aviation Institute, and it is already 90 years old. In the times of the Soviet Empire, it was a mighty prestigious educational institution comparable to MIT in the US. For instance, one of the first mass production civilian aircrafts with the retractable landing gear was developed here. Also, one of the first Soviet turbojets was developed here as well. Let's try to pass into its territory and take a look at the local attractions. My grandfather graduated from this institute during the height of the Cold War, and in those times it was a limited access place, very much tightened with the military industrial complex. The very top notch students were selected to be educated here, and the access was limited to the point that their notes were forbidden to be taken outside of this place. Nowadays, it's just a decent place to get your degree at. The first building we meet is the main one. This is where the headquarters are resident. Also, it is a home base for humanities faculty. Our philosophy lessons were carried out exactly here, and yes, despite being studied in the technical branch, we've got two semesters of philosophy. Further down the road, we see the old sports building, and it is still being used for some sports disciplines. For instance, the local swimming pool is located here. And here is the diving platform. I think it is out of use because of quarantine, but usually it works even in winter times. Yes, it is possible here to swim under the bare sky even in winter. And it is an interesting experience. Now we are going closer to the motors building, which is a home base for the engines building faculty. It is possible to spot that the construction took place in the year of 1953, the year Stalin died. Let's try to take a look inside, there are some curiosities to explore. So, inside the lobby of the motors building, it is possible to observe, well, the motors or the engines. These look like the turbine engines. Such ones appeared after the Second World War.
and here is the inheritance of the ancients, the rarities from the times of the Second World War, and even before. For instance, there is an Ellison V12 engine that was installed on P-51 Mustang and P-39 Era Cobra. Another one is the Rolls-Royce Merlin V12, used by the glorious Spitfire. The question is how they appeared here. I bet they were taken from the aircrafts that were supplied to the Soviet Union by the Land Lease Program during the Second World War. The final point of the exposition is the blade cluster from the turbine used in nuclear stations. Here in Hai, students are being taught to design even such stuff. Now we are going out of the motors building and move on. This pink building is an office of interaction with the foreign students. The impressive number of Africans, Asians and Indians is studying here. The foreign students are usually organized into separate English-speaking groups. Therefore, during the education process, the local and foreign students are rarely interacting with each other. At this moment, we reached the weird place that might be called one of the graveyards of the Cold War. Behind the building rests abandoned war machines. Among the remarkable ones is Mi-24, a turbojet-powered storm helicopter. In its times, it was the fastest helicopter in the world. Further rest the battle unit of MiG-23 fighters, along with the support trucks. My father was in charge of servicing such fighters during his time of serving for the Soviet Army. Curiously, this graveyard of war machines is turned into a training track for the driving classes. Let's move on further through the territory, through the many utility buildings I confess I do not know the designation of. I should stress the quality of the landscaping of the territory. It amazed me at first encounter and truly it is popular. Moms are eager to have a walk here with their babies.
Wow, what the empty pedestal! Lenin was here, and he is no more. But I believe there is a Lenin now standing in Seattle. What an irony! This is a Su-7, which is a yet another weapon of the Cold War, used by Egypt in a thriveless war against the State of Israel. Finally, we came to my native building belonging to the faculty of the radio engineering systems of the aircrafts. But I swear, there is nothing special inside, so let's move on. The next building belongs to the faculty of the rocket and space technology. Obviously, here students are taught rocket science. At the entrance we can spot some part of the rocket engine. But the primary artifact here is the ball called Shara. This is a local wishmaker. The scribing on it says, Shara is free for all, so that nobody will go resentful. Shara is a jargon which means free stuff. The phrase itself is an allusion to the sighting from the book called Roadside Picnic. I do highly recommend this book, but I would never recommend counting on free stuff from the magic sphere. Nevertheless, I witnessed myself some students given a money sacrifice for this ball, hoping it will magically pass the exams for them. Here we can see lots of giant airtight containers. They store compressed air. Compressed air is used in a wind tunnel, which is a huge device on its own, used for testing the models of new airplanes. Yes, I forget to say that at least older buildings are connected with the underground tunnels and the bomb shelters. Also, the institute still benefits the autonomous water supply. It isn't hard to get that all these safety measures were implemented for the case of a global nuclear war. Now, these are just handy curiosities. Sometimes students still use the tunnels for the transfer between the buildings. The last building belongs to the first faculty, which stands at the foundation of the university. It is a faculty of the aircraft construction. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to get into the desired classroom on Saturday. Therefore, we have to be satisfied with this picture of it. Although I belong to a different faculty, we also had a few aircraft-related subjects and some of our classes were taking place in this exact room, which is called the Room of the Aircraft Construction. This room is so huge, it is capable of containing two battle aircrafts, MiG-21 and Yak-25, 
not considering various parts and artifacts. Going behind the home of the first faculty, we've come back to the beginning of our journey, which is the primary checkpoint. Here we've got a few more details to cover. Such as a Hai loving signboard, the gorgeous flower bed, and the fighter MiG-17, the last Cold War artifact for today. You might have noticed that many inscriptions or letterings are written not in Russian. In fact, they are written in Ukrainian. It shouldn't be a surprise, since it is the official language here in Ukraine. Local Ukrainian students are being taught in Ukrainian or Russian depending on the preferences of the groups or the teacher. The senior courses have English-speaking groups. Well, that's all from me today. Unfortunately, we haven't got enough time to cover all the curiosities, since the territory is so huge and many artifacts are located inside the buildings. Nevertheless, I hope this kind of mini-tour was interesting to you. Questions and comments are the most welcome. And yes, useful links can be found here in below. Bye bye.